Welcome back. This is our third session of our 2024 All Church Study on Dietrich Bonhoeffer's classic, Life Together. I am so glad you're here. Whether you've been able to read <coughs> the chapters for today or whether you're just here to learn from the people around you, I think we're in for uh, a great discussion. Remember last week, our first chapter was focused on this beautiful truth that we are community. God did it. He made us a body, his body. God did it. So it's a divine reality, not something we achieve. God did it. And we learn to live and love out what he has done. So now this week, we're going to be moving more to the practical how exactly do we reflect the idea that we are the community that God has made. Today, we're talking about simple daily activities that God calls us to. And maybe you already do some of them. Maybe you've heard of them. Maybe you've generally reserved these activities for church. One of the interesting things is these activities that Dietrich Bonhoeffer is suggesting are ones that he's suggesting we do outside the walls of church, even though we might also do them here. Interestingly, uh, Bonhoeffer is always trying to make sure that our faith is not just a Saturday or Sunday thing, that our faith makes its way into the daily rhythms and routines of our lives. Now, these activities, I listed them for you on your handout if you want to take, uh, take that out um, right under the video teaching heading. I'm just going to read them. So the, the, for the day with others, he says scripture, and he, partic he particularly comments on the Psalter. That's just a fancy word for the book of Psalms, which is right smack dab in the middle of your Bible. There are 150 of them. And for centuries, actually, even Jesus, we know, read and memorized the Psalms consistently. So they are just a great resource for daily um, Christian life. In the New Testament, which the Psalms are in the Old Testament, Paul says this, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. It is just those psalms in our Bible that Paul is talking about there in Colossians 3, 16. Okay, on to the list. Singing, that when Christians hang out together, there should be singing. Prayer. Prayer. Fellowship of the table, that actually our eating together has, uh, is a way of living out our faith. Work, whatever work we do. And um, he gives special emphasis to noonday and evening as well. And then the day alone, he talks about solitude and silence, meditation, prayer, and intercession. So we're going to be taking a look at those activities today. Um, as we talk together, um, his main idea here is that one's faith in Jesus can make its way into everyday ordinary living, and these practices are kind of the path to do it. If you're wondering how to be more aware of God's presence in your everyday life, these practices might help. It is as though we are a beautiful, delicious stew, and these practices are what give us his flavor, the right flavor. Another way to think about it, these practices help us remember who we are in our daily lives. Now, here's what's hard about suggesting a list of practices it can immediately become a checklist, something to accomplish, something to, uh, to discourage you when, you don't, when it doesn't go well. I keep trying to think about how can I help you with a mindset that you might see this as an invitation, a lovely 
invitation, something to try. One other thing that, as Bonhoeffer points out uh, repeatedly, these practices come from God's word. That's how we know that they are the right thing to do or a helpful thing to do or a healthy thing to do. They're not some kind of top ten list, uh, uh, you know, top ten ways to live out community list. They are actually, as I said, invitations, ways, paths, routes to reflect the kind of community that we live in. It's been helpful to me in my life to think of spiritual practices as two things. One is, they're a place to start. Rather than being, you should do this, they are a place to begin. When someone explains a spiritual practice, and I, it's a place where I can dive in, give it a try, give it a shot. And then secondly, and this one has been the most important for me, spiritual practices are a bridge back. Spiritual practices aren't so much about me accomplishing them every day perfectly, doing it exactly right, as they are a way to get back into a rhythm that's helpful and healthy when I fall off. They are the bridge back. At the end of your handout today, you're going to find a pretty lengthy list of what I hope are, you know, um, triable, small commitments that you could make to, to either continue or begin to have spiritual practices in your regular everyday life. They are things like if you live with others, if you stop right before you leave the house in the morning, stand before the front door, and there's a prayer you could pray together. Uh, maybe you live alone, but there's one person or more at your workplace who'd be willing to just exchange the verse of the day from the Bible app with you. Maybe you have kids in your house and you learn to sing your prayers before meals. Or maybe you live alone and when you ha have dinner with your friends, you might be brave enough to suggest that you pray before you eat together. Anyway, you'll see the list. And I'm going to ask you to please just choose one of those things on that list that you'd be willing to try uh, this week. Just one. Just one. Just one. <laughs> and here's the beauty of being in a small group. When you come back together next week, you can just be honest. I tried it. It was great. I tried it. It didn't. wasn't great. I didn't try it. I just couldn't get up the guts to do it or whatever. And you know what? It's all good because we're on the journey together. Marsha Peth mentioned to me uh, just this morning that if you think about it, right, the disciples, most of them, were just fishermen. They just decided to hang out with Jesus. They weren't Bible teachers. They weren't super disciples. They were, they were fishermen. And so we are just fishermen or silly sheep if you will, uh, and we get to hang around with Jesus, and that's what these practices help us do. I hope you have a great discussion in your small group, friends, and, uh, and just have a great week. Uh, you are treasured by God. Bye-bye.